Good afternoon, boys and girls. Uh, Todd here, or Hi Guys Todd here, uh, vlog time. And did that screen just move? Anyway, uh, right, Sunday afternoon in the shed, and uh, today we're going to be looking at the Vapor Fusion by Petter K. Now, Petter K has most of his mods in the past have been like 14500, 14650 devices, which I have the version 3 and the version 2 of. Uh, this is slightly different. It's an 1800 series device and uh, as usual as far as Petter K's products go, it's... Um, I'm trying to think how to put this. It's just not your average run-of-the-mill device. There is so much going on. Uh, the highest quality materials, it's... I tell you what, just... And, and this might sound a bit strange. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you everything in the close-ups. But basically this is, like I say, an 1800 series tube mod, but it's hybrid. So you've got a Genesis tank set up and you can also change it to be a, a dripper set up if you want. And uh, you can have a little one mil tank and you can have a big tank. Um, that You can single dual coil mode, you can run it with um, silica, uh, cotton, uh, mesh, you can you can move the drip tip up and down and reduce the size of the chamber. An awful lot going on here and I've had this for a wee while because it's taken me a wee while to actually feel comfortable enough to talk about this and show it off. Uh, this is not one of these devices that you can just pick up and bullshit your way through. Uh, you really can't. Uh, even the switch itself, you can adjust the switch. There's, you can adjust the vacuum on the switch to adjust the speed of how the switch drops down. You can have a clicky switch, a semi-clicky switch. Ah, oh, it's mental. Right, where you can get this from? Just now, Vapist.net has these in stock, and uh, they are at 150 pounds just now. Um, also, he's doing a special offer. If you purchase a Vapor V4 along with the Vapor Fusion, you'll save an additional £20. Um, if you're not going to uh, Vapus.net, I think Vapus ships worldwide anyway, you'll be able to go along to Facebook and grab a hold of Petter K there as well, uh, or just look for the Vapor. Uh, all the links and all the details will be in the description of the YouTube video. Now, there are going to be a few slides pop up here and there giving you all the specifications. I will also in the description refer you to Petter K's own tutorial videos. The long videos take you through all the different setups, all the dismantling and things like that. Now, I'm not going to do this to the level that Petter's done it because, like I say, there's so much of it there. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is just run you through how I've been using it and how you can use it and uh, very much a high level overview shall we call it that? yeah, high level overview we're not going down to the nuts and bolts here uh, and Petter will probably be cursing me up and down now because I know what he's like such a perfectionist Guy is such a perfectionist uh, but before we go into the close-ups there will be a couple of slides hit pause, want to read them, and uh, we'll take it from there. Here we go. Right, let's get this show on the road. So, uh, your fusion is going to come in a little cardboard tube like this. Inside you will find your device and you will find a bag of spares as well with some cotton. So we'll just take this out of the way just now. And this is the device. Now this is not the device as standard. As standard it actually comes with uh, a drip tip like this. Uh, but uh, Petter was kind enough to include a stainless steel one as well, which is an optional extra. But uh, just remember, as standard, you get this one. 
but even this in itself is not just a normal drip tip. Now just quickly to run through this, uh, you would have seen from the specs, we've got a, a brass tank protector here, uh, I can pull this off here, uh, just to start you off, you see we've got the, the drip tip here, you can actually push this drip tip up and down, like so. So you can reduce the size of the chamber just by pushing this drip tip up and down. Uh, it can, it does need a little bit of lubrication for this to work at its best, but uh, it does work and it does change the flavour as you push it up and down. The only thing I would uh, strongly suggest is if you're running this with stainless steel mesh is that you make sure that the top of your stainless steel mesh wick does not touch the top of your drip tip, especially the, the metal one like this. We can run this in dual or single coil, uh, so we have the three air holes going on around here, and there's our inside. Now, this is the deck in pretty much standard configuration here, and you can see we've got, uh, you know, in the middle here, we have our positive, two negatives on the outside, and we have two wick holes here as well. We also have a big nut here, and this is for your fill hole. Now these are, you know, the, these little insulators here, you can pull them out if you're going to run it with cotton, and you know, you can just have a, a big huge wick hole going on there, you know, the measurements would have been up, and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to, to run it this way, and uh, you know, you've got your tank here, and it just wicks away like nothing on earth, and it runs great. You can, if you want to, you can remove this whole tank section here and, and just run it without the tank and just take this deck section and it will drop right down and it gives you a bit of one mil tank instead. And I'll show you how to change that over in a minute. So this is it in standard setup. Um, what I can do is I can unscrew this from here. And underneath here you can see you've got a silver plated contact and there is a spring underneath here to keep tension on it. And we can adjust this up and down to suit whatever battery we're using. You do also get a smaller contact in the spares pack as well, so you can use that. Um, so that just fits on there. This is an 18500 tube, you can get the other tube sets as well, uh, they do cost extra. Down the bottom we have our switch assembly here, just let all this fall out. So we have a spring here and a spacer here as well, this is for if you're using you know batteries that don't quite make contact, uh, but it is a spacer and you can see that it does have slots cut out on the side here, you know, to enable venting down past it. There's your switch. And right now it's a very, yeah, it's just a beautiful touch on it. And you can adjust this switch in so many ways and I will show you that as well. But right now we'll go back up to the top and uh, I'll start breaking this down and uh, showing you how to get the different setups on the go. So just starting up at the top again, I mean we've got the three 1.8mm air holes here. And yes they are fully adjustable. When you push this onto here, you do have like two stages. It one, it just slides on, and then the second contact, it clicks into place. Uh, there are two different sizes of O-rings here, and uh, it keeps it in place really nicely. And you can just turn this round, and you know, just pick up your air holes. As I said at the start, you know, you can adjust this, and you can change the height of the chamber inside. So that's really it for the top cap. Um, your air holes are in here. You can see you've got the two of them going on here. So you can run this in dual or single coil configuration. Now if you wanted to run it in single coil configuration, what you would do is you would unscrew one of the contacts like this. I'll just take this off. Take that out like so. And you have these little guys here that come in the spares pack. And um, basically I just drop that down there. And you can see that that's blanking off the hole. 
and we just take that back again, pop it in and screw it in place. So there we go, we can run it in single coil configuration and just blank off the whole quite the thing. Just budge that over a bit and that's us. So there you go, you can see you can actually take these insulators out and you can run it with just a big wick hole there. So you're either going to be running it in 3.5mm or putting the insulator in, you're going to be running it in 2.5mm. Insulators really for when you're going to be running in Genesis configuration. I'll come back to how to build on this uh, towards the end because building on this is uh, <laughs> it's, it's fun and games. Anyway, right, so we'll, we'll unscrew this from here and what I'll do is I'll show you how to change this over to if you wanted to run just without the tank. So what you would do is we'll strip everything out of here. There we go. And I also need to take out this bit here. So there's one nut on the top here. And underneath that you will find two washers. Just come off there. And I'll get that blanker off. There we go. Right, so here's our tank. Now I'll unscrew this contact at the bottom. And there's also this spring that comes out. And all we do here is uh, we're going to push down on this contact here and push this Delrin piece out. Uh, it can be a bit stiff the first few times you do it, but then it does get a bit easier. So here we go. Let's just pull that out. And you can see you've got your long post there, and this is for when you're using the tank. Now that I've got that out, you will find that included in the spares kit is this little rod here that just sits across there. There's two little cutouts, and I shouldn't have tightened this up too much, but you probably will need to get a pair of pliers or something in there the first time you do it. But put that to the spares pack so I can unscrew this like that so I'm going to put this out the way and then just unscrew this from here so there's our deck this is a tank you know it's just a couple of o-rings on either side just make sure when you're putting everything back together that it's well lubricated and uh, I haven't found any issues with this at all but just make sure it's well lubricated. Get some you know, liquid in there, splash it about and push everything into place and make sure it's sat right. So that's that. So what I'm going to do now is take the deck and in the spares pack is this little guy here and he's pretty much just going to push right up there. Uh, do you have the insulator there? So I'll just pop this in here and push them up. So I would just pop my uh, my two washers back on here, the nut, and put everything back together. And then I can basically run this as just like this, basically. The top cap. Top cap will sit in there. Uh, I'll take my spring, pop that back in there. I'm going to use one of the smaller nuts, uh, I found I've had to use that with my batteries and just screw that down there. Like that. And then that's it, you can just run it without the tank and just run it as a, a hybrid dripper like this. But I'm not going to run it like that today, I'm going to put this back to uh, the tank mode uh, just so that you can see how I've been setting it up. Now before we launch into the switch here I just wanted to, to mention that you know uh, when you want you, what you can do is if you've got your air holes open here just turning it just a notch and closing it off and that's it. You, you know you can leave this device down and it will not leak now uh, so that's another nifty feature of the device. Uh, but what we're going to do just now is take this switch apart and we're going to have a breakdown of this. Now, as before, you know, you have this spring here, 
sits like that and you have the optional spacer here and we'll just take them out the way and the way I've been well, sorry just to show you what's going on underneath here you know you've got all this engraving going on and a hole in the middle you know for some venting and right now this is how I've been running the switch I've got a, a nice firm press on it and it's got kind of like a, a slow release that there is a vacuum in here just now uh, so it doesn't just ping back out it's there's a slow release due to the vacuum now there are two th this section here I'll just unscrew this there are two of them one of them's uh, oh god I forget one's plain steel and the other one is silver plated brass if I remember correctly so I'm just unscrewing this just now I'm just going to let this bit drop out of the bottom and you can see that I've got magnets running in here just now so there's a magnet in the bottom and opposing magnets here now this plate here you can see I've got three screws now right now and this is exactly what Peter did in his video uh, if I was to take all the magnets out of here and just pop this in here and let it go because there's a vacuum this would fall out slowly if I took this middle screw out here that would mean that there is no vacuum and it would just be like an, an on off switch you know it would just come straight back out there would be no soft release as such and that's what that middle screw there is for so if you want like a on off type thing take that screw out altogether if you want to have a like a, a slow release then you can just you get that kind of thing going on then leave that screw in now you also get a you know there's two magnets there and one here you know you can run it as you want basically you can also what you can do is if we take the magnets out so I got screwdrivers flying all over the place here I'm also going to take I'm going to take out this little middle screw here so that's that screw out of there altogether you will find in the spares that you have a fourth magnet so what I'm going to do is take all four magnets oh, I've got a little bit there stick them all together plop them in there and then take this and pop it in like that so I've got the four magnets in there and I've also got the screw out now what I need is the other one the, the other little nut that's in there you know it's just the, the plain steel one if I remember correctly uh, so now just by screwing this one on I've got clicky mode Um, now I know Peter says in his video he thinks he prefers this but I must admit myself I don't <laughs> I prefer the, the having the vacuum on it but it just, just goes to show how customizable this bloody thing is uh, so what you can also do and just to point this out is you can almost like adjust this as well by adjusting these two screws here because it's going to push well not in click mode but in uh, you know when you've got the vacuum on um, you can adjust these two screws so it will actually push the two magnets the two opposing magnets closer to one another so there are many ways that you can adjust this um, the only thing I would say is be careful with these little guys, uh, they are tiny and uh, you know if you've got big muckle paws like me that they're not the easiest things to actually put in place either. I always end up getting my, my little tweezers out and just starting it off and then just screwing it back in. So once again it's up to you how you run it. I like my just the two magnets so I'm just going to pop this back together hopefully. There we go. It's just, I love that vacuum effect on it. It's just, 
I know it's quite sad, but there you go. Uh, so I'm just going to pop this back on. That's me. It's got a lovely throw in it there. And it, this doesn't fire under its own weight either. Uh, you do find if it's in clicky mode that you have to be careful. It doesn't directly fire under its own weight, but if you put it down too hard, then I have found that it will do. So remember that there's there's two different contacts here. You know, there's one that's plain steel, that's silver plated, and one that's brass silver plated. Uh, one of them will work in clicky mode, one of them will not work in clicky mode. And that's pretty much it for the switch. Yes, there's a lot to it, but uh, just having... It's so customizable, this thing. It, it really is. Now, to, to build on this deck, I'm not going to... It's a pain in the arse. <laughs> it really is a pain in the arse. Uh, yeah, you've got this, uh, you know, you've got your two washers underneath this bolt here, and uh, single coil's not so bad, but dual coil build is quite a bit of a pain. Um, now, I've been doing vertical coils, uh, not horizontal, but I just found vertical to be a lot easier for me. Now, I know Petter has his own build method, and uh, you can see that by looking at his videos. I'm going to go against what he's doing, and I'm going to do just the way that I found it easiest for me. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, whatever's easiest for you. Let's say there's nothing wrong with the way Petter was doing it, um, but th this is just the way I like to build. Uh, I've just got uh, these two rods do come with the, you know, the spares kit, kit as well. And I'm just going to trim these wires down a little bit. So I've just undone the bolt here a little bit and I've backed off the screws a little bit as well. Uh, so just, you know, it's just the usual coiling. I mean, you're, you're just dropping your little rod in there. I've already got the, the wire around the positive there. I'm just going to spin it round and basically pulling it out of the way. Oh, my little rod's falling in there. Um, so I can even pull that out just now, just to show you. Get out of there. So you can see it's, it's just now it's I've already got my loop round the positive. So now I'm just going to take my wire round the negative now. So I've got that there. I'm just going to tighten off this negative. There's my coil in place. Uh, slap bang in front of that hole there. Uh, I'll position it about once I've tightened off the, the terminals. You know, it's they're not tightened up just now. I just wanted that coil in place. So this is tightened off. I should be able to snip this wire off. Like that. And I'm going to keep this one pulled tight so that I can get the other wires set up, well, get my other coil set up now. So hopefully you can see that I've, I'm, I'm almost set up here. All I've got to do is just tighten off this nut here, which is the the pain, because you really do need a pair of pliers for it. That's so what I've found is I'm just taking a pair of tweezers and slowly tightening it up. Of course, you know, the way you put your wire underneath it, clockwise, anti-clockwise, does play a big part in it. Um, because I've gone clockwise around the nut, when I'm tightening it, it's actually pulling the, the coil out of shape. And that would be a good time to actually take the two rods that are supplied, just leave them like that so that it doesn't go pulling anything out of shape. Right, so I've got that tightened down quite a bit, so I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers and try and get the final turn on it. So here's my two coils in place. This wire here is just a little bit on the... I really wanted to feed that under there just a little bit more. It's just a little bit too long. A bit worried about that. But uh, what I'll do is we'll uh, get everything centred over the holes. So that's me got my battery tube on and uh, we'll have a little test fire here, see how she's doing. Let's 
it's looking not too bad just got to squeeze these up a bit and just make sure that they're firing at the same time and nice and bright which they seem to be okay I mean once my coils are set up all I'll literally do is uh, just pass the wick through the coil and just let it go down into that little hole well that three and a half mil hole I should say yeah. snip that bit off and then all I do is just tuck that bit in there like so that's all I've been doing um, and I'll do the same with the other side now right so that's, that's been just about ready to go all I'm going to do now is uh, got my fill hole here and I'm just going to fill this up with some uh, goose juice so I've filled the tank up I'm just going to put the the fill hole do that in and I do like to use this uh, I just found it f for whatever reason it just seemed to wick better with that in place um, which is normally the opposite of what we're used to take a little bit of juice and soak this up now I just want to make sure those coils are slap bang in front of the air holes I've not got too much cotton that's going to you know just make a mess um, and, and just tidy this up that's good enough for me and I'm going to take my top cap line up the dual coils like that pop this on here and that is me ready to vape now that looked like a bloody nightmare and I'll be completely honest with you it can be a bloody nightmare um, you know you got your two negatives and the, the positives in here and, and it's oh man it can be a pain in the backside you do get used to it and you can sit I mean I know it looked all fingers and thumbs the way I do it but uh, Petter's got a way of doing it himself I tried doing it his way but you know he cuts his uh, he cuts his cotton completely different and he lays it out completely different uh, I tried it a couple of times and for me personally it didn't work that well for me it, just I've got big fingers for me in the way I coil badly uh, I found this to be the easiest way f personally uh, there's no right or wrong way as always it's just the finished result it's how it vapes that matters now once again I'm using the, the this is an add-on this is a stainless steel drip tip and uh, yes you can push it up and down now I'm using um, my, my usual goose juice and I've got the air holes wide open so just have a little vape I've mentioned this in a couple of vlogs this for me is is, is is up there yeah I think the flavour from this is just awesome absolutely awesome uh, it, it really is I mean when you push the top cap this the drip tip down and, and shrink the chamber it gets warm as well um, but it's I don't know it, and it never dries out it never seems to dry out uh, I, I just found when I put in the fill hole plunger thingy, uh, when I put that in, uh, just when I'm inhaling, it's just drawing more juice up and I've got a constant dripper experience. It is quite incredible how well this vapes. It's not a cloud chaser, but in saying that, I've seen Peter Kay's builds and he builds a lot lower resistance than I do uh, I'm not a fan of going too low because I've got the 18500 tube if I had the 18650 tube as well maybe I'd go a bit lower but this is just the perfect vape for me now as I said you can run it 
you know, without the tank and just as a, a standard hybrid dripper, uh, but also have a little one mil tank in there as well. Um, you can configure this so many ways. Now, we'll just, I'm going to cut through the bullshit and get to the pros and cons in this. Now, the cons, in my opinion, it is fiddly as hell. I mean, it is a f fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Um, there are so many things, this is a positive and a negative, there are so many things you can tweak. Tweak the switch and, you know, building it and, and things like that. I just, if you're a tinkerer, you will love this. <laughs> you really will love it. If you're somebody that just likes to slap a coil in and go, this is not a slap a coil in and go type device. There is a learning curve. You will have to learn how to build on this properly. Um, some people may disagree with me on that, but uh, I can only go on my findings. Once you get your coils and the way you build mastered, oh my. Um, the fiddliness is is really the, the only negative I can level at this, and that's taken a lot in. You know, the the screws are, are tiny, the, the little grub screws for the, you know, adjusting the throw and the switch and whatnot are tiny. Um, you do get spares, so that's kind of covered, but you really do want to have a dedicated work section for when you start mucking about with this. Um, so for me, personally, um, I would say it's a fiddly little bugger. It really is. That is the negative. On the positive, I cannot fault the vape from this at all. You can adjust the temperature by adjusting the height of this drip tip section here. Uh, the airflow is adjustable. It's not what I would call a cloud chaser, but you can get some clouds off of it. You can also run it as uh, with silica, cotton and stainless steel mesh. If you want to run stainless steel mesh, these coils that I've set up here, all I would do is I would drop the insulators in underneath them, roll my mesh to the same diameter, drop it in and you're away, you're in Genesis mode. Um, you, you, it's quite simple that way. So you can run it in any material you want for wicking. Um, I love the fact that I can run it with this big tank full of juice. I can run it in hybrid dripper mode as well. I mean, it is a hybrid tank anyway. Um, that's just great. Uh, what was a negative with it being fiddly, I also love the switch. It's just being able to adjust the, the throw, not, not just the throw, but the softness of the throw and the way it returns. You can have it as a clicky button or just a soft button. All that kind of stuff is just amazing. Couple of turns and that's it locked. It's not firing now. Turn it back. That's it firing. Um, so whilst in some people's books it's not a dedicated locking switch, it does lock. Uh, if you are in any way a fan of Peter Kay's earlier work, this to me is his, is, is his crowning glory so far. Uh, this, this is just m my kind of thing. And I think this will appeal to... How can I put this without sounding like a dick? Um, not advanced users, but uh, tinkerers. People that don't mind sitting, spending time coiling and playing about. This will so appeal to you and, and the rewards from doing it uh, outweigh the negatives in my opinion. Uh, w would I go and buy this? Yes. After using this for a few weeks, if, if I, would I go out and buy it? Yes. Hand on heart. Totally because it's it's right up my street, floats my boat and all that jazz. I can see it not appealing to a lot of people just mainly because of the fiddle factor. And that's it, that's it. I will stress again that Peter does have 
a whole heap of videos and breaking this down, putting it together, adjusting the switch and everything, and a lot more in depth than what I've done here. Um, I didn't want to go down that road of make of covering all that because this video would go on, it would turn into over an hour, an hour and a half if I did. Um, I, I just wanted to keep this how I've been using it and the results I've been getting from it. And I think that covers it from should you buy it, should you not buy it. Uh, if you like flavour out of your juice. My custards that I vape have never ever tasted as good as the taste out of this. And that is why I love this thing with a passion. It's worth the faff. It's worth the getting in about it. It's just worth it. Bliss. Bliss. I'd like to thank Peter for sending this on to me. I'd also like to thank Damien. Damien, if you see this, thanks, mate. Um, also, Vapist. Thank you to Vapist. So you can get it at vapist.net. You can contact Peter direct on his Facebook page and you can go that. All the links and descriptions and everything will be in the YouTube description. So go there and have a read. Um, and that's it from me. I'm going to go now. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Sorry I rambled and drooled, as usual. But uh, that's it from me. Catch you later, guys. Bye now.